Finally, let's take a look at what happens whenever we change the temperature. Let's go back to our ammonia reaction again. And this time we need to know something extra about it. We need to know whether it's endothermic or exothermic. It turns out the formation of ammonia, in other words, the forward reaction, is exothermic. You might also just know that the delta H in this case is negative, and so you would have to identify that a negative delta H means that this is an exothermic reaction. Now, anytime we're dealing with Le Chatelier's principle and a change in temperature, we need to figure out whether the energy is put in to the reaction as a reactant in order to get our product, or if energy is released as um, a product. In this case, if we have an exothermic reaction, that means that this reaction is releasing energy to its surroundings. That's going to mean that energy in this case is a product of the forward reaction. If this were an endothermic reaction, we would write plus energy on the reactant side because we need to put energy in in order for this reaction to proceed forward. So that's the first step we have to do is identify that. Now, we'll just treat that energy as any other species in the reaction when we're dealing with the Chatelier's principle. If we were to increase the temperature, that's the same thing as increasing the energy. Well, if I increase the energy on the product side, that's going to shift the whole reaction to the left. And if we shift the reaction to the left, that means that nitrogen and hydrogen concentration will increase and therefore ammonia concentration will decrease. The corollary to that, if we were to decrease the energy, in other words, if we were to make the reaction colder, that would shift the reaction the other way. It would shift it to the right. Now, one important thing about temperature, whenever you change the temperature, unlike changes in concentration and changes in pressure, a change in the temperature does affect the K value. In this case, since we shifted toward the reactants, the K value is going to decrease. If we were to shift it toward the products, that would mean that the K value would increase. Because remember, the K is the equilibrium product concentration over reactant concentration. Now let's look at a problem to see if you can combine all the things we've talked about together. In this reaction, we have carbon dioxide gas combining with calcium oxide solid to produce calcium carbonate solid. And that exists in equilibrium. Your challenge is how can you maximize the amount of calcium carbonate produced and calcium oxide consumed? The synthesis of calcium carbonate is exothermic. So think about this in terms of the three things we talked about. How can you change concentration? How can you change pressure? And how can you change the temperature in order to maximize the product calcium carbonate? Well, first of all, concentrations. If you look at these three, there's only one concentration that's going to affect our equilibrium because we only have one thing that's not a solid, and that's going to be the carbon dioxide. So what would you need to do in order to shift this reaction toward calcium carbonate? Well, you would need to increase the concentration of CO2 gas. By adding CO2 gas, that will shift the reaction to the right. A second thing you can do, what about pressure? Well, take a look. Where do you have the most number of moles of gas? Well, it turns out that the only gas you have is a reactant. So if you're going to increase the pressure, that would shift it toward the fewest number of moles of gas. That would be a shift toward the right. So we would want to increase the pressure, shifting the reaction to the right, where there's fewer moles of gas. Finally, what about temperature? Well, we have to take a look. This reaction is exothermic, meaning that energy is going to be a product in the reaction. Energy is released. It's exothermic. So what do we need to do as far as energy is concerned? Well, we want to maximize calcium carbonate. That means we need to decrease the energy. In other words, lower the temperature, which would shift this reaction to the right. If you did these three things, you would maximize the amount of calcium carbonate that you produced in the reaction. So that's Le Chatelier's principle. I know that was a lot, but it's such an important idea in equilibrium chemistry, and I hope you had as much fun with the video as I did making it.